all right so how y'all doing boys hope you're doing well night in today's video of course with another scardy showcase i do believe this might be the final one of hers for the time being unless i do of course come up with any two new teams or you guys do suggest any in the comments with her i mean i feel like we've covered most of the team she's viable on unless there's some kind of like a little more less ordinary and less meta dominant team that is super fun with her I feel like this will be the last one, but if you guys don't know what the Scardi does, her first card here decreases the hero's max HP by 2% three times for three turns, then inflicts damage equal to 625% of attack on one enemy, stacks up to five times. The second card cancels buffs and stances on one enemy and inflicts damage equal to 400% of attack. The ultimate, which although it does look fairly bad and we only have it at 1-6, can actually hit fairly high, especially if you are running her alongside Keo and you have those max ignites. I think we are hit almost... Otherwise, we did just hit, I think, just about a million damage on a 1-6 ultimate of hers, which is absolutely crazy for the fact that it also heals 30% of damage dealt, which is really, really nice. And then last but not least, the passive decreases all enemies' attack and defense by 8% and increases allies' skill damage dealt by 15% for each debuff on the hero. So obviously, best case scenario with us a whole bunch of heroes in this video, but we'll just have to wait and see. Jumping over to the gear here, we are rocking her on the attack crit. I haven't... I have heard a bunch of people say that attack crit's better, and then personally, I'm just a person who likes to see big numbers. Personally, I'm a person. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, use whatever you like for Scardi, and then jumping over to the cosmetics here. Not a whole lot of investment into those, but this is the thing we're using today. Using her alongside King, I'm hoping this can do really well, especially since, you know, he can kind of protect her, she can debuff herself, and then we can kind of get that passive rolling. But uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, here we go. First opponent and a Ludo Escanor team. I mean... I pretty much haven't played any PvP over... For the last couple days, I've been away, so I haven't really been doing an awful lot of PvP. But, I did try and get a couple attempts on the Deer Raiden whilst I was gone, and I've gone ahead. I've beaten the first stage. I did kind of stop there, because I didn't have, like, a crazy amount of time, but I'm, of course, going to do showcases on that. I can pretty much feel as if, though, I'll be able to do the second one, so that should be fine. It's more just that third phase, which I think I might struggle with, but, of course, within the next couple, maybe, maybe even next vid, we'll try and fit out a Deer showcase, at least for the you know, at least for the first stage, but let's see, getting rid of that Escanor turn one and just having like all these debuffs on our Scardi, you're instantly in such a good position. Like that card draw there is pretty much the ideal card draw. If you're using something like her alongside Trader Meliodas, I'd say you probably want to get the merger for Scardi and then have Meliodas in the middle and probably get an extra Meli single target card that we can throw off the two Scardi ones. But I mean, hey, we're in a pretty good position here. Who do we want to... I might see if I can go for Death Pierce actually. Just try and see how much... I mean, the Ice Tiger card isn't, like, the strongest card in the world, but we'll throw the King card out there, get the extra damage from the passive. And let's see. I I feel as if they will be able to easily kill Death Pierce here, even without any crits or anything at the end. I mean, just shy of 300,000. That's not too bad. Here's a character with fairly low substats, so the fact that all of those weren't crits, a little disappointing. But I can definitely see this being one of the better Scardi teams. I feel as if, though, don't get me wrong, first of all characters are pretty much always going to be good to run like king and meliodas you're always going to have a good time running characters with them but i feel like the way scotty's built is just more supported so by these two new units as well but chucking out those two cards there i did throw out the king card first just because we kind of want to see scotty's maximum damage and oh my god i was only a one star card you can really see the passive start to show at this point but here we go i'd say i mean we did actually see but pretty easy first match but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below how you guys have been going with the new Deer Raid and if you are struggling with it and what you guys reckon. I really do hope we don't get another Demonic Beast anytime soon because, I mean, I highly doubt it. Look at that, getting the perfect card draw once again. If I don't kill Keo here, we are in a pretty bad spot. But if I kill the Lilia, we start... I think I'm actually going to go for... Yeah, why not? We'll go for this. Get the Lilia out of the way. I mean, him having Keo there, though we do still have the Ignites on us, it is probably in our best interest actually having here, especially for showcase purposes. Are we not going to kill the Christmas Lilia? Ooh, damn, that's... We're definitely in a bad spot at the moment. That's why you should definitely build her HP defense or even HP crit. Like, the only reason I have mine attack crit is because it's going to be like a slight increase in damage. But the amount of CC you miss out on, like, if you want the best compatible, like, a uh, competitive, sorry, Awakened Lilia, please, please, please run her on HP the fact that she has the flood card is just so helpful. Let's see though. Let's go one, two, and I think I might remove the buffs from you as well. That will give us the ultimate as well, which is really, really nice. We're getting a whole bunch of debuffs on our Scardi there. Just shy of 400,000 off the one star card. 
I mean, you can definitely see the support coming out from her there. Like, that's the kind of numbers you'd expect to see King with, like, a Keel or something have, but she's definitely helping out a whole ton. Of course, can't remove the Grey Buffs from Ellie. I mean, hey, the fact that we get to see, hopefully we can get those extra two Ignites from the Keel Holy Relic on Sky as well, just to see that max damage. I would really like to throw out a King card first, just to get, like, the slight damage increase, but I just, I highly doubt they'll be able to survive that. There we go, Ghost is still surviving, with the shield at least. Oh my god. I mean, granted, look, we did remove all of his buffs as well, but she is such a good unit for countering the Meliodas. She is, god damn, look at that. We'll throw this one out here, and then I suppose we'll just get rid of these two king cards. But what do we reckon? Maybe like a 500,000? I feel like for a 1-6 ultimate that heals, that's like a pretty, yeah, 600,000. She is impressive, to say the least. But I mean, with those first two matches, we are on an absolute roll, and this is another team that the Mono Blue Archangel team I'm not like really the biggest fan of firsting, but with Scotty, the fact you have the buff removal and all that other kind of stuff, very, very helpful. Let's see, we'll throw out the king card and I think we might just rank up and do... I think we might just try and chip away at Margaret to start off with. Hold on to the Arsical Dagger card, of course. I mean, even if like they don't, the chance of them getting a level 3 Breath of Bless is like near impossible without Gotha, but still, it helps out a whole bunch. Extra rank up as well, then I probably would have preferred that to be a nice Dagger card, but... We should have to see. Unfor Actually, this removes stance as a well level 3, doesn't it? So, I mean, yeah, she is... Although the cards are kind of weird and she isn't, like, as strong as King or anyone, like, I can definitely see her being, like, a top-tier PvP unit. And apparently, I mean, I feel as if her purpose was for the Deer Her coming out pretty much on the same update, but... I don't know. I definitely feel as if, though... I'll have to give it a shot. I'll have to give it a shot. Once I've actually complete stage 3 of the Deer with, like, a regular team, please don't prop revive. Oh, perfect. Do you look at that? I reckon we can easy prop, especially with all the debuffs we have on us, with the pump and bombs there. Perfect. I mean, what better start could you ask for? I'm guessing there's going to be like a blue gill come to the front. Blue Escanor. Okay. I'm going to go for the double rank up play. And I think chucking out a king card is by far our safest bet, unless he has like another shield or something along those lines. We should be pretty good to go. Ah, <sighs> God. No Icicle Dagger cards either. I mean, hey, look, she's not getting crit. That definitely... If she had got crit, that I definitely feel as if she would have survived. But her health wouldn't have been looking the greatest. Oh, we could go for the double rank up, get the go to the ultimate. But I feel like we'll have a very weak shield at that point. I think that might be our best play. Just because it'll set us up really well for the next turn in case anything happens. So, got the go through ultimate. Really hope we at least break, like, the tiniest bit of shield so that we can... Oh, God. That's still going to be a little bit, right? And there we go. We got the go through ultimate. We got a whole bunch of gold cards. Got a bunch of these cards as well, which is really, really nice. Let's see. Yeah. Ain't no way you're breaking the shield there with just that level one card. Level one stun. I think this might be a bot with those. With that play there. I mean, it was looking pretty good, especially in like the first half, but I don't know about that one. Let's go one, two, and three, I suppose. Just get as many debuffs on it as possible. Rare to see, actually, that you'll probably get this many without... Type disadvantage, one tapping Tarmiel. Okay, go ahead, one tap Escanor as well. I dare you. Yeah, gosh, I don't think she's looked this impressive in a showcase this far. Like, this is crazy what she's done these past three matches. One tap King. Oh, gorgeous. Super, super long loading time. A Ragnarok DN as well. And yeah, I kind of guess the fact that we've been going so good that coming up against the real player and them having heaps higher CC was bound to happen eventually. I do really like this DM. I do wish she had just a couple better skins, although they are like all fairly good. I know she just doesn't have any skins I feel that like match this one for King or this one for Scardy, anything along those lines. But let's see, going for the double rank up to start it off. Going for the attack disable. Come on, man. And I don't think any of the Scardy cards actually remove, like, get an extra debuff or anything from getting like to rank two or rank three. Ooh, this is such a bad start for us. <laughs> The Red Gotha, although for offensive purpose, yeah, I really don't know what I'm going to go for here. I suppose. But yeah, although the Green Gotha is a lot better, like the Pumpkin Bomb card is a lot better, I feel, than the Attack Disable. Although in certain matchups, you would just get absolutely cleaned by Attack Disable. And the passive is a whole bunch better. I don't know, it's really up to you. Like having Queen Shop Gotha and not having the Green Gotha, you're not missing out. On a crazy amount granted look 
using Gother and stuff like the Bird Raid, or even though like some like pretty much all the best teams now you don't even use Gother. Missing out on those five stacks can be a little annoying, but as you can see, we're easily gonna lose to a team that is higher CC than us for sure. But yeah, it, it kind of gets onto the Goddesses level where like that was a three turn attack disable, wasn't it? I didn't actually pay like an awful amount of attention. I can't see the debuff for some reason. Let's just go ahead and chuck these out and we'll waste that card as well. But yeah, we, if you don't have a cleanse, and pretty much no teams have cleansing units nowadays. It can be a little tough, especially when they get to go first. Can't, not like we can rush the ultimate either because they're going to remove it. And that's probably one of the better parts about this Gotha is it's so easy and so accessible to get them 6-6. Six, six. The CC, huge, huge boost. I think it's like 2,000 CC between having like a 1-6 and a 6-6 uh, six, six unit. So that's a big help. And just the damage as well is really, really nice. But I'm guessing he's pretty much going to mop us up on this turn here. Good to see that we had a match where we didn't just go insanely well with this Scardi. Still have, I think, two more matches after this. So, hey, hopefully we can wrap up those two with victories as well. Yeah, not getting a whole lot of use out of the Ragnarok Deanne. I definitely feel as if, though, there are a couple better picks that he could have used. Oh, for that Deanne there. Really not going to use to go through. I mean, he's going to wipe us out here anyway, so that's all right. On to the next opponent. And surely we have CC this time. Definitely like this team and got the Merlin Holy Relic as well, which is really cool. I'm actually going to have to get the Holy Relic soon. I haven't, I haven't grinded the bird as much as I thought I would have. What do we want to go for to start this off though? Uh, one, two, and... Do I want to go for the rank up on Skadi actually? Yeah, I think, why not? We'll go for the rank up. One, two, and three. We'll of course hold them to the Ice Cold Dagger because the second he starts spamming those single target cards, we can just remove all that progress. I mean, sometimes it can only be like two buffs that you remove, but trust me, once he gets like that four, five, six buffs, it is so goddamn helpful. Him not having those and actually getting the extra Icicle Dagger card as well there, which is super helpful. Not the most defensive team, which, I mean, most of the time we are running <laughs> the most defensive team either. We do, of course, have the King, which is a huge, huge help there. Using the melee card first. Okay, I suppose we do, of course, have the extra Ignites on Kyo there, so that does help us out a crazy, crazy amount. I don't feel like there's going to be an awful lot more he can do after this turn. I might actually go for the buff removal on you. Discuss I feel as if these two king cards are going to be enough to wrap up the melee. Probably should have gone for Merlin in all honesty, just because you can only hit damage cap so many like so many times. Yeah, no, we're easy killing melee there with these airways. I mean, hey, looking pretty good. Hopefully, we don't wrap up the video on a loss. I feel like we've been on a pretty hot streak of just going like flawless throughout the whole video, and then just on like the final fifth or sixth match, we just managed to stuff it up. But there we go. Let's see our final victim. Here we go, final opponent and a... Ah, God, it's gonna happen again, isn't it? It's a King Melee team. Hit a good card draw to start us off, but I don't know, man. The, the rain cups, the amount of damage, just like using something like this in PvP and just absolutely stomping everyone is just like such an easy option. I don't know, I still don't know if I wanna like go ahead and do like one of the top 100s and get one of the like characters when they come out. If they do, like, start to re-release them, I will obviously go ahead, but the fact that I've already missed so many does kind of, like, deter me from doing so. Let's see, who do we want to get rid of here? Uh... I think I might go for you. Do I actually want to hold on to... I think I might hold on to the Ice Skull Dagger card. I think we might go for this. Get as many debuffs out as possible. Hmm... Yeah, that probably wasn't the best option, isn't it? I probably should have ranked up and done that one first. That we got a tiny little bit of extra damage. Could have broken the shields a little bit easier, but getting King super, super low there. It does also, like, increase our... It increases our defense, I believe. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but as long as we can survive this turn, we might actually still be able to come through with this one. All those... The rank ups as well are really, really nice. The our card draw isn't looking too terribly. If we can manage to come through this match, I'll definitely be happy with... God... Please survive. Okay, hold on. Oh no, there's no way you're surviving that, yeah. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, we actually, we pretty much don't have any option other than to rank up and go for a double king card. Hopefully that life steals us all the way back up to full, and then we also have his ultimate. Which, yes, is very strong when your opponent has like a whole bunch of buffs or, you know, has a debuff team. But just by itself, it is fairly weak. So hopefully he uses a couple more single target cards, gets his melee up just a tiny bit more so we can put a couple of debuffs on him before the ultimate. But he is fairly low as well. 
Just hoping we don't just get absolutely one tapped by the Pierce card. Who's he got in the back? The one Escanor. Exactly who we didn't want to see. Oh, and it looks like he's a, he's using a Green Sariel Association as well. Is that actually? No, I think that might be coming from somewhere else, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, absolutely one tap. So shield is expected. Oh god, please don't. If he has a melee card, I think our king just dies. Okay, no, hold on. Wait, how much life steal did you get from that? A lot. Why not? One, two, and actually, I might go ahead and use his first card, get the attack boost up, we'll remove the buffs, and then that way he has a little bit, because these are all stats increase. And then we'll go for this one here. Really trying to come through this. I don't want to end up losing to wrap up the video once again. It's such a common theme. Okay, a whole bunch of debuffs on melee there, which is exactly what we wanted. Him coming through with that one HP there was a massive clutch. There we go, we did it. That does it for the video. There we go, and that just about does it for today's showcase. I mean, hey, Scardi has not looked this impressive in pretty much any of the showcases we've done with her. Although I do definitely feel as if though she does better on the trader melee team. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's just the way on paper it looks, but definitely happy with how she did in today's showcase. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please hit like button, subscribe. Really means a lot to me and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.